Uh, we're Chasing Status, I'm Saul and this is Will. And today we're going to be showing you how we made some beats for you guys at home. Um, right, so we made this beat from uh, layering quite a few different drum hits and breaks and basically going to break it down. This is the beat in the full. <coughs> about 10 layers of drums in there um, and we'll just go through each layer individually building up from pretty much where we started um, which would be the kick channel. We do uh, most of our beats predominantly in audio. We have two MIDI, MIDI channels there which are from Contact 2 which is a soft sampler but for us and a lot of other people uh, the ease in using audio for your beats is, is, is great. And um, this first sample here, this is a kick drum, a single kick drum, not layered with any other kick drums, um, from a nice sample CD. Not much processing at all, it's a little bit of EQ to take out the, the very low end, which will conflict with the bass. But aside from that, the old, the old phrase, you can't polish it, you know, is, is, is uh, in use here. We try and keep it as, as flat as possible. It's, and we use this um, spectral analyzer um, quite often just to sort of make sure that the drums are using a kind of hitting at the right frequencies in drum and bass um, the optimum kind of frequency for a kick drum is about 100 hertz so here you can sort of see it's peaking at around 100 which which means it will cut through nicely on a, on a sort of big system so got the kick drum um, add a snare to it simple really tight punchy snare again no no low end in there um, and you want the snare sort of cutting through at about 200 hertz as well. Again, we have no compression on it, no, not much, pro no processing really, no fancy tricks, just a, a nice clean sounding snare that we found, um, hitting the, the correct frequency, and um, we uh, layer that with another snare, probably hitting a bit lower, maybe like 180, just to give it a bit of low end to the snare. Again pretty much unprocessed, we try to have these samples as clean as we can have them. Um, also, don't really use any reverb on, on, on the main kick and snare, just because um, there's so little room, the, the music's so fast, and generally there's so little room to sort of, for the frequencies to breathe, we find putting reverb on the kind of main crunk of the, the beats sort of muddies it and, and takes up too, too much room. So. Main kick and snare there, then we'll add some hi hats. Again, with these hi hats, um, they're just off an old hip hop sample CD we've had for a long, long time. And uh, they just happen to sound really nice. They've got a nice sheen, nice high end to them. Again, no EQing, no processing, just a bit of low cut on them so that there'll be no rumbling frequencies to get in the way of bass or the kick drum. Just add another break with a bit more release on the snare, it's a bit more rugged sounding. Um, it's just an old drum and bass break off, off a sample CD, kind of gives it a bit more grit, sort of takes away from the sort of clean synthetic, of clean sort of noise. Um, also just has a couple of hats in there just to sort of take away from the kind of continuous hat that we originally put in there. Um, We often add um, a light break with a lot of reverb on it, just high pass quite a lot, just to sit behind the beats. Um, probably quite hard to hear. It's quite like constant ringing that you're hearing it right now. Also, with this break, to, to add to a kind of shuffle, we've shortened um, some of the snares to a, to a very short size, and um, we've written them in a shuffle position, and just adds more. More groove. So yeah, add, add some shuffle, kind of like rim shots um, on the off beats. Um, you can either have it continuous or sort of sporadic. Sporadic. This shuffle here that we, we, we've used, that we are using a few tunes. Originally, was a full break that we EQ'd, pitched, and um, on the ABSR function, shortened the release and the decay, so that it had a constant shuffle. Um, and 
And then uh, the all important splash. Often, often drum and bass sounds really kind of empty without um, more kind of splashy live sounding drums behind it that kind of helps pick up the energy and, and add some of the sheen. So we actually uh, use quite often a, a, a rock break, break from a sort of famous rock song. Um, Bypass it. And yeah, there's, again, you can see that we've pretty much taken out um, all the bass up to sort of around 1400 hertz. Um, so really, really high pass the break. Those are the main um, sort of parts of the break. Then added a bit more splash, just kind of often put in a sort of cheap sounding Amen. Um, always good just to kind of fill out the frequencies, frequencies, kind of give it a little bit more energy. So something like this. Also just taking out all the hats, uh, uh, all the, um, all the kick drums. It's good often we find uh, if you layer kicks, you sometimes lose the original energy of, of the initial kick, so you might have your kick sounding really punchy and then um, you'll just add e even a really high passed kick, um, like the one originally on this aim, and it just kind of cancelled out the attack of the original kick, so just copied and pasted the sort of hats from it, again really high pass and um, yeah, it kind of adds to the... Uh, So it helps to get a sort of dirtier noise. It's, it's quite hard to. Um, it's quite easy to sort of end up with a really synthetic, sort of quite clean, clean sounding, which isn't yes. really what drum and bass is all about. So it helps keep it a bit more organic. Um, and then yeah, so on this next layer here, we um, add some more splash. Uh, the one in question here is uh, largely used from an old track of ours on Bingo called the Druids, which is a combination of the Trayman break. Um, another old school Amen break, and I think the Fink break, if I remember correctly. High pass again, and uh, just throwing behind it just to fill it out even more. We often find with beats, with drum and bass, uh, one of the most important things is how the, the bass resonates and works with the kick drum. So we we're looking for kick drums. Um, when, we, when we look for kick drums, we often test them out with the sub because if the, if the sub works well with the kick, half the battle is there. You know, if, if it sounds flabby, which Future got taught us, thank you very much for that, boys. Then um, and it just it doesn't sound sour, it doesn't sit nicely. So it's important to get the kick and the sub working well together. Um, final layer, pretty, pretty almost sort of inaudible. Again, there's some really sort of bright, airy hats. Add a bit of sheen to it. We've got a nice high-end sheen, which we um, actually we used this sheen before um, in a recent release on RAM called Disco. And just add some nice tops to it. So that, that's pretty much layers of the break. Um, really, it's all about getting the kick and the snare punchy and then just filling out the frequencies with some sort of nice splashy kind of breaks. Um, uh, yeah, kick, you want it punching at around 100 hertz. Um, snare at about 200 hertz. As you can see here, the snare is quite prominent, sort of sticking out there. There's not too much surrounding it. Um, Nothing also um, is coming above this um, 10 line, 10 dB line, which um, we've just found using this particular analyzer, which is probably the best one out there. Um, if any of your frequencies tend to go above this line, um, we find that's the sort of limit on a club system where the limiter will sort of cut in. So you generally want everything in the mix sort of staying under there and that's generally how we master like the overall mix as long as everything's kind everything's of peaking at the 10 dB if things are popping over it it generally pulls back the mix um, but yeah and as, uh, also as you can see lots of room 
in the middle here for, for your, your bases and your, your mids and um, also a lot of room here for your Low sub bass. Um, so this is the kind of sort of look you want for, you, for your drums, you know, taking up the sort of low frequencies um, for your kicks and snares and then uh, nice high frequencies around 1200 hertz for uh, sort of hi-hats and things. And uh, yeah, if you can get that right, you should have a start to a good track. When it comes to writing beats, um, we just like to keep it real simple. The old phrase, less is more, really is apparent in not just writing the whole tune, but in making the beats. Uh, people try and over overcomplicate things and have four kick drums and 16 snares, too much shuffle. This stuff just phases itself out. And obviously when we first started, we, we were also guilty of having a ridiculously huge page of beats and layers. And then we just realised we were muting half the things and weren't using three quarters of them. And um, yeah, just keep it simple. Don't get, don't overcomplicate things. And uh, just try a few things out. Try and see whether the face works with it whether your noises work well with the snares. And if you could use a break, like an old school funk break, or even like we layer and aim and underneath it, retain the whole break there, because that gives it a full feeling. If you have bits and hits and bits of bobs of different breaks, then the beats often sound all out of place. But if you have individual hits of synthetic drums, then kind of organically aim and layered underneath it, brings it together quite nicely. Also, I'd say, um be really accurate with this sort of editing of, of, of drums and if you're chopping up a break really kind of zoom in because um, I find too many people sort of if, if I look at someone else's project often um, they haven't really sort of zoomed in it far enough and they find the, the beat sounds a bit loose and not quantized and I mean you know we really kind of zoom in until the absolute nearest you can go kind of thing and just make sure that you know, take the snap off and, and really like Move get, as, get, 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 get as much room as possible really, like crop everything really tightly, you know, use the envelopes to kind of um, shorten the release of drums and get, get rid of any unnecessary noise or anything like that. So yeah, be super accurate because it's such a fast music, you know, the, the whole key is kind of making that room. And uh, there's also a lot of talk these days, a lot of people using side chaining. Which is which is which is cool. It sounds really good, but people need not to think that that is the only way to you know process your beats as well. You don't you don't need to have side chaining on your beats to make it work with the bass. A lot of people it works for brilliantly and they have great effects. Like Pendulum uses uh, side chaining on the Pack of Wolves remix for Ram, and you can really hear it. And it sounds sounds fantastic. And New Guy Culture Shock on his tune Bypass, you can really hear the side chaining and the mix down is fantastic on that tune and noisier as well on tunes such as Subdue and it's got that great swing feel but if you can't get into the side chaining um, uh, instrument some Cubase there aren't many that really work with it unlike Logic and we find you can just do it on a volume automation like drawing in the envelopes but you know side chaining is excellent but it's not the be all and end all so if you can't get your head around it or haven't got a good plug in to do it all is not lost beats don't sound terrible without side chaining I think probably also an important thing to say is um, a lot of people use uh, like ultra maximizers and um, limiters and all, all these kind of things that end in ISA basically um, to try and get their mixes sounding louder which we always find um, one we've been told by some of the best mastering engineers in the country never use things like that and uh, we do find that it really takes away from the dynamic of the break Squishes just to, to, to get mixes louder really. <coughs> If you've got the right balance of frequencies and nothing sticking out too much, you should be able to drive it on the master out as, as, as quite a lot without one part getting distorted. And a good way often is driving it really loud, putting the, the meter up to sort of full. And as you go higher, some of the brake will start falling apart, like maybe the kick drum will start sort of sounding distorted so you know that mm -hmm. if that's getting distorted way before the snares and etc maybe that's a bit high in the mix so um yeah we just to get our beats sounding loud we just drive it you know high in the, in the master right there's no we never have a limiter or anything of the sort 
on the master out of general use at all really. It's, 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 if they, some people use it a lot for their sound and that's that's cool but for us we find it's never applicable. And also if you put like a limiter I find or a maximizer on the on the final mix of the ends, you lose all the shape of the low end as well. As well as the, the block being a square not enough dynamic, it really like muddies up the bass and just takes away like shape of it. We learned that um, quite a while ago when we our first tunes were too maximized. 